Now I want to show you how the ethmoid and the frontal bone come together. So we've got the ethmoid notch and we have the ethmoid itself. So you can see there's a lateral view of the ethmoid and the frontal bone. Here you can see the inside view, how that cribiform plate of the ethmoid sits inside that ethmoid notch. So when you are working with the frontal bone, you also are able to directly impact the articulation of the frontal and the ethmoid and thereby impacting the mobility of the ethmoid itself. All right, now let's take a look at moving back. We're going to take a look at the parietal bones. So you have two parietal bones, obviously, left and right. They meet in the middle at the sagittal suture. And you can see that sagittal suture is what we call an interdigitated suture. And then the posterior aspect of the parietals meet with the occiput at the lambdoid suture. And then we have, you can see on the lateral aspect, the parietal bones articulate with the temporal bones, left and right temporal bones. There's also an aspect, the front inferior corner of the parietal bone articulates with the greater wing of the sphenoid, the yellow bone. Now one thing I want to point out to you, you have heard about the fontanelles. When babies are born, they have soft spots in different areas of the cranium. And as the bones expand and reach out to connect with the other bones present in the cranium, those fontanelles disappear over time. And the anterior fontanelle, which is present where the parietal bones and the frontal bone meet. That's where the anterior fontanelle is present. That one is takes the longest to finish knitting together. It's about age two when the anterior fontanelle closes over. Then we have another fontanelle. The fontanelles are basically at all four corners of the parietals. So we've got the posterior fontanelle where the parietals meet up with the occiput. And then we also have the mastoid fontanelle. And we have the sphenoid fontanelle. So there are six fontanelles. The anterior, where the parietals meet with the frontal, the posterior where the parietals meet with the occiput. And then on the lateral aspect of the parietals, we've got the mastoid and the sphenoid. The parietal bones are also interesting because underneath the sagittal suture where they meet in the midline runs the fulcs. So the fulcs, again, that membrane we saw that runs down the midline of the frontal bone runs underneath the sagittal suture of the parietal bones. We'll also see in the membrane video, the sagittal suture is where the superior venous sinus runs beneath. The other thing I want to point out to you about the parietal bones is that we talked about an interdigitated suture at the midline, at the sagittal suture. There's a beveled suture on the lateral edge where the parietal and the temporal bone articulates. So here you can see more clearly, it's a beveled suture present 
on the lateral edge of this parietal bone. And then you can see on the temporal bone, you can see that beveled area on the temporal bone that is designed to overlap the parietal bone. And that suture essentially is an overlapping suture. So you can see how they come together. So the temporal bone overlaps the parietal bone and forms a beveled suture on that lateral aspect of the parietal bone. Let's do the occiput next. So you can see the posterior aspect of the cranium. We've got the occiput articulating with the parietal bones as we talked about earlier at the lambdoid suture. We also have an articulation occiput and temporal bones at the mastoid suture. And then I'm going to remove the mandible here so you can see it more clearly. We have an articulation on the underside of the cranium. The occiput meets up with the yellow bone, which is the sphenoid, the underside of the sphenoid. And that is the sphenobasilar joint. And I also want to say there is some information that has come out more recently that talks about studies showing that the sphenobasilar joint actually does fuse. And they're saying it fuses between 17 and I believe it is age 19. Within that window, they're seeing fusion present at that joint. Um, they're saying, what I, the article that I read that I will link to below this, talks about how the mobility that we feel between the sphenoid and the occiput may be the greater wings of the sphenoid moving rather than the sphenoid articulation with the occiput. So, interesting information. I also want to point out to you the foramen magnum, so that large hole that superiorly above the foramen magnum sits the brain stem and beneath the foramen magnum passes the spinal cord. You can also see the condyles of the occiput, which is where the occiput rests on C1. So C1 and the condyles. I also want to point out to you, you can see the space present where the temporal bone and the occiput meet up. There is a space present that is the jugular foramen. And that foramen is, most foramen are present within a bone. So a space, a hole within a bone. But the jugular foramen is actually a space between two bones. So the thing to keep in mind with that is it's more vulnerable because if there's compression between the temporal bone and the occiput bone, that can have an impact on the space that is available there at the jugular foramen. And the jugular foramen, as I'm sure you're well aware, is where the jugular vein passes out of the cranium carrying about 90% of the blood and the CSF out of the cranium. So that is the occiput. I want to show you the interior view of the occiput because there's an interesting pattern in the bone. So you are looking, this would be as if someone was facing you and I'm going to angle it a little bit differently for viewing purposes. The top portion would be more posterior. So you're looking at the anterior inner aspect of the occiput. And you can see the vertical membrane, the falx, passing down the midline of the occiput. 
And then you can also see the horizontal membrane, the tentorium, and they intersect. They form across an intersection within the occiput. Above the tentorium sit the occipital lobes of the brain, and below the tentorium sit the cerebellum, left and right halves of the cerebellum. And we'll look at that more closely in the brain video. So you can see the condyles a little more clearly on this model. I also want to point out to you the landmark on the occiput of the external occipital protuberance. So you can feel it on most people. It's the bump on the back of the head above the soft tissue of the neck. That's a landmark, an important landmark, because inside the EOP, so here's the EOP on this model. Inside of that is the intersection of the tent and the falks. So that helps to orient you and give you a better sense of what structures are underneath your hands just inside that bone. It's the intersection of the tent and the folks. Mm -hmm.